<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good day to you, depending where you are in the world. Someone asked me the other day, why do I say good morning, good afternoon, good... There are people listening to this, watching this in various parts of the world. So when it's morning in the UK, you're here in London, it's nighttime in New York, and it's probably afternoon time in Australia. So I have to address everyone in different parts of the world. Also, someone might be watching this the next day after I've loaded it. And depending on what time they're reading it, it's relevant. I'm saying good morning, good afternoon, etc. Anyway, I digress. It's the nighttime devotion. We're reading from the devotional Lift Him Up. The title today is A Great Reformatory Movement. The script reading comes from 2 Corinthians 9, 6. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. When we begin to comprehend what a sacrifice Christ made in order to save a perishing world, there will be seen a mighty wrestling to save souls. Oh, that all our churches might see and realize the infinite sacrifice of Christ. In visions of the night, representations pass before me of a great reformatory movement among God's people. Many were praising God. The sick were healed. Other miracles were wrought. A spirit of intercession was seen, even as was manifested before the great day of Pentecost. Hundreds, thousands were even visiting families and opening before them the word of God. Hearts were convicted by the power of the Holy Spirit. A spirit of genuine conversion was manifest. On every side, doors were thrown open to the proclamation of the truth. The world seemed to be lightened with the heavenly influence. Great blessings were received by the true and humble people of God. I heard voices of thanksgiving and praise. The judgments of God are in the earth and under the influence of the Holy Spirit, we must give the message of warning that he has entrusted to us. We must give this message quickly, line upon line, precept upon precept. Men will soon be forced to great decisions and it is our duty to see that they are given an opportunity to understand the truth, that they might may, that they may take their stand intelligently on the right side. The Lord calls upon his people to labor, labor earnestly and wisely while probation lingers. Among the members of our churches, there should be more house-to-house -house labor in giving Bible readings, distributing literature. A Christian character can be symmetrically and completely formed only when the human agent regards it as a privilege to work disinterestedly in the proclamation of the truth and to sustain the cause of God with means. We must sow beside all waters, keeping our souls in the love of God, working while it is day and using the means the Lord has given to us to do whatever duty comes next. Whatever our hands find to do, we are to do with faithfulness. Whatever sacrifice we are called upon to make, we are to make it cheerfully. As we sow beside all waters, we shall realize that he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The Lord has presented before me the work that is to be done in our cities. The believers in these cities are to work for God 
in the neighbourhoods of their homes. They are to labour quietly and in humility, carrying with them wherever they go the atmosphere of heaven. If they keep self out of sight, pointing always to Christ, the power of their influence will be felt. And I think that's the most practical part of this. In the, it, it, if you keep self out of sight, allow God to use you as a channel. It's not about going there, getting angry and getting passionate and jumping up and down. And it's about being humble, being meek. And letting God just use you. His words flow through you. When you do that, everyone must listen. Because it won't be you talking. It will be God speaking through you. I hope you understand that.